welcome back. This is week two of GBS English here at Sunshine Young University. I hope you're all having a very good week and getting ready for some good holidays coming up because it is that time of the year when holidays are going to be starting. So this week, we're going to get into our, le our lesson about talking about texting and on how to communicate using different social medias and different systems that we use at different times in our life. Now, social media and text messages are great. So let's get right into it and let's have some fun with our material today. All right, so starting off, we're gonna start off talking about vocabulary and using verbs such as send, play, do, and go. Uh, when we send something, we actually have to make something go from one place to another. So you can send emails, you can send uh, your text messages. Social networks, we don't actually send those to another person, but we do send things through social network services. So be careful with that. Um, I send an email, I send a text message, I send a real snail mail message. Now, for those of you who don't know, a snail mail message is when you send it through the regular post. It's called snail mail because in the 21st century, you can send an email halfway around the world in seconds, but an actual package can take anywhere between seven days and four months to get to wherever it's going. So be careful with that. When you play something, uh, you can play music, you can play a sport, but there are some sports that you do versus things that you play. For example, you go or you go swimming, you go on a hike, you do yoga, you do aerobics, you don't play yoga, you don't play swimming. You can go swimming and then play, but you don't play swimming. It's just one of those things in English we don't put together. Uh, the same thing goes with taking. You can take a bus ride, you can take a taxi ride, you can take a drive, you can take a stroll. There are many things that you can take. And in these verb phrases, some are acceptable and some are not. So be sure to practice, go through the list, see what you have there. Try to make some variation. Some are gonna work, some of them may not. So take a look at that. Now, when it says, take a look at pair work, guessing what's true about your partners. We're going to do a little bit of this when we get to class next week. So get ready to talk about your partners a little bit more. Now, we're going to listen to a conversation between Ellen and Luke. And they're talking about the different ways that they actually communicate with their friends. Now, we all have different ways that we talk. And some are good and some are bad. Okay. Some are appropriate and some are inappropriate. Okay. Um. All forms of communication are appropriate, and we want to be able to use them to the best of our ability. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, so there are some communications we use more often than others. In my own personal life, I use text messaging more than I use phone calls, but other people prefer phone calls. This is just your personal preference. So let's take a listen to what Ellen and Luke say in their conversation. What are you doing? I'm just sending an email. Do you always use your phone to send emails? All of my friends text these days. Some of my friends text, some don't. That email was to my dad. So, what else do you use your phone for? I often use it to play games. A lot of my friends watch movies, but I find the screen too small. Do you use it for social networking? Sure, all the time. Say, I don't think we're friends online. All right, so yes, they're gonna use their social media and their telephone for doing things. And if you notice their phones, their phones are a little bit smaller than what we have today. Smartphones have changed. Over my lifetime of getting phones, uh, the original telephones, if you look back in the 1980s, and 70s phones were huge for mobile phones and they get smaller and smaller and smaller 
until about the year 2005. They got so small, and then they slowly started getting bigger again. And yes, your telephone is more powerful than a lot of computers from just 20 or 30 years ago. My first laptop computer was not even able to do half the stuff that my telephone can do. And that was only 20 years ago. So things change quickly. Some people use their telephone for everything. Um, some people do their entire life through their telephone, texting and emails and surfing the internet. They do it all through telephone. Be careful not to become a smombie. Now it's a smartphone zombie. And I'm sure you've seen them walking around looking only at their telephone. When you're walking, walk. When you're looking at a telephone, stop. Not in the middle of the street, of course, but stop while you're doing that. Don't don't stop in the middle of the street because, uh, um, yeah, that's just not a good place to go. So use your smartphone. Be smart about it because um, if you're walking and you're uh, texting and doing things, mm -hmm. no, no, no. you're going to run into something. If you run into something, um, it can become painful. It can be expensive when you end up dropping your phone and breaking it. So be careful with that. Don't become a smartphone zombie. When you're walking, don't be looking at your computer screen. I personally, I, I do listen to YouTube videos while I'm walking, but I listen to them. I don't actually watch them. I'll turn a video on and then I'll walk listening to the audio versus watching it. So be sure to know what you're doing for yourself. Page eight, conversation. C, listen, write the two extra sentences you hear in the conversation. Practice the new conversation. All right, so we're gonna to listen to that conversation a second time. And there's gonna be two extra lines that are gonna be added in. While you're listening, try to put those extra sentences in where they belong. They don't change the conversation much, but they do add to the conversation. So take a listen and let's add those lines. What are you doing? Are you busy? I'm just sending an email. Do you always use your phone to send emails? All of my friends text these days. Some of my friends text, some don't. That email was to my dad. He sends me emails every day. So, what else do you use your phone for? I often use it to play games. A lot of my friends watch movies, but I find the screen too small. Do you use it for social networking? Sure, all the time. Say, I don't think we're friends online. All right, so be very careful with your telephones and the things that you do with them. Uh, he uses his phone for games, but he says he can't watch videos on his phone. Now, uh, I know some of you have mobile devices. You have the iPads or the uh, Android tablets, and you can watch movies at full screen, and it, it's a great way to introduce yourself to English and whatever you're watching. I introduced a couple of websites in your first week of class if you came to the extra class about where you can get videos like TED, YouTube, and animation websites where you can go find out and use your English and find videos that help you. But for his social networking, he uses his phone for everything. Uh, and some people prefer to communicate by different ways. My father, personally, he likes email better than text messages. And I like text messages better than email. So it's just a personal preference. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk now about uh, adverbs. No, God! Yeah, yes, we have to talk a little bit about- No, God, please, We no, have to do a no, little grammar. No! Yes. No! Grammar is part of this. We're not gonna talk much about it, but then we talk about adding grammars as a quantity or qualifier. So when we say all of or some of, most of, 
what we're doing is we're giving a qualifier or quantifier to what we say. All of my friends do this. Be careful with all of and none of. The reason to be careful of those is that if you have that one friend that doesn't, then it doesn't work for everyone. Remember, all of is 100%. None of is 0% perfection on either end of the scale. So if you're going to use something all or say almost all of my friends or almost none of my friends, that gives you that little bit of wiggle room to get out of 100%. Gives you 99.9999999999999% of the time. But we use these adverb phrase, all of, most of, many of, a lot of, some of, uh, a lot, or so many of my friends, a few of, we use these to justify the quantities that we're using. So if, for example, most of my friends enjoy drinking beer. Some of my friends enjoy drinking soju. A few of my friends don't like drinking alcohol at all. But Currently, there are none of my friends that don't that really don't enjoy going out and hanging out with people, especially after being in a lockdown from the pandemic for the last year and a half. So use that in your ideas. Put those into your sentences. When we're talking in class, be sure to use these and explain your ideas about text messages, about receiving emails. When we talk about these in class, be sure to access this and use this. Now, we're going to talk about pronunciation for a little bit. And I know that people love pronunciation. <coughs> okay, uh, pronunciation is important. It's something you have to. <coughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, it's something that we all have to work on. Now, in these sentences, when we're using of, O-V in a sentence. Of is usually pronounced with a schwa sound and a V sound. The F in English, F and V are what we call fricatives. They involve you using your lip and making a sound. F is unvoiced while V is voice. When we make it as an unstressed syllable, we use of. It's a a, uh, which is the schwa sound, an uh sound, and v, and you just put it together. Of. All of our classmates. It blends together. All of, all of, some of, a lot of. The words and the sounds get blended together when you hear people speaking it. So you might say, hmm, I don't understand exactly what that person's saying. Are they saying something different? probably just a blending the sounds together. It takes practice, it takes your ear listening and hearing it, which is why I suggest go out and practice it as much as you can. So let's listen and hear what we're talking about in pronunciation. Page nine, pronunciation. A, listen and practice. Notice how of is often pronounced of before vowel sounds but reduced to uh before consonant sounds. Of plus vowel sound. All of our classmates. A lot of English speakers. A few of us in this class. Of plus consonant sound. All of my classmates. A lot of Korean speakers. A few of their friends. All right, so now when you listen to that, on the first sight, the F sound or the, the V sound was very clear. All of my classmates, a lot of, it was very clear. In the second half, it kind of gets shortened to just a, uh, all of my classmates. Now, there are some people like myself who work on good pronouncing, all of my classmates. I make sure to make it very clear and pronounced, but... And here's the big butt. I know I'm sitting on the big butt, but here's the problem. 
a lot of speakers of English will speak quickly and not enunciate the v sound at the end of of. And I'll just be all of my children. A lot of Korean speakers, they'll blend together with just a uh, as a sound. I know what you mean. All right, now we're gonna talk about these questions. How do you get to class? Where do you study? And we're gonna talk about this as transportation. Now, transportation, each of us has our different ways to get to our different locations. Some of us prefer subways, some people prefer walking, some people prefer to drive their own cars. I personally prefer using my motorcycle to get around. It gives me freedom, it gives me a chance to move wherever I wanna go. And when traffic is bad, I can get around traffic at least a little bit. I don't do it much, but just a little bit. So when you think about transportation, think about how you get to school every day and what kind of transportation you use. Some of you probably get on a Sinchon Hyung bus and you travel the entire way to campus on a bus. Others of you may be, live a, a little bit closer and take the subway and then transfer to a bus. Remember, there's lots of ways and there's no right way or wrong way to travel around. So let's move on and talk about the workbook and put those pieces together so that you'll know what to do for your homework. Now we have the words, play, keep, have, am, send, get, a, use, do, go, and take. Now, you want to put those words into phrases down below. Now, some of the phrases will make more sense than others. For example, you want to have a pet, but keep a pet is also accurate. Uh, you wouldn't use something else like take a pet or do a pet. That could get to be uh, something... Oh, no! We don't want to like, think into those categories, but <laughs> when we put a pet, we have a pet or we uh, keep a pet. A job, we're going to do the same thing, have a job or keep a job. When we have basketball, if we're talking about the noun, I have a basketball, you're talking I have a noun, but if you're talking verb as in game, I play basketball. I don't do basketball. Um, I take a bus or I ride on a bus. There are more than one way to use some of these phrases. So put a word that fixes it. Now, some of them will not need a part to make it complete. You can just put an X there and say, yeah, I don't need anything there. That's great. One of the ones that to be very careful with is when the word has an ing ending. Like, example, number nine, hiking. I am going to go hiking. I'm not going to play hiking. Because hiking is a verb and it has ing ending, you need another verb to help it. All right. In the second sentence in part, you're going to complete the sentence for you using the expression from part one. So I blank every day. What do you do every day? Do you go swimming? Do you ride the bike every day? Do you climb a mountain every day? Do you do your homework? Do you exercise every day? What do you do every day? Make these sentences true for something that you do. And we move on, how college students spend their time. Now, a lot of college students, I was a college student too. I, I spent a lot of my time, surprisingly, I spent a lot of my time dancing when I was in college. I know you may look at me and say, my big, fat, ugly English teacher was out dancing all the time? Uh, actually, I was. I was dancing three nights a week out at the local clubs. And I enjoyed it. I was a good dancer. I still am a good dancer. I think I'm a good dancer. I don't know. But how college students spend their time. Each of you will have different ways that you spend time. So I'm going to read the article so that you can hear it, but read the article and then answer how do each of the students spend time according to this article? How college students spend their time? It's August, and soon students will be going back to school. Some students are going to college for the first time. Many first time college students and their parents worry. 
Will school be too stressful? Will they work too hard? Can they handle the pressure? Don't worry. According to a recent study, most students aren't working too hard. How they are spending their time? Well, most are getting enough sleep. College students sleep more than eight hours a day. And yes, they do go to class, 3.6 hours, but they do three time activities and sports almost as much, three and a half hours. The average college student works almost three hours a day and travels about an hour and a half. That leaves eating one hour, personal care, personal care about 0.8 of an hour, and everything else, 2.3 hours. So relax. College isn't that hard at all. And you'll be surprised at how many things that you do and how much time you spend doing it. Six hours later. You may end up going to the PC bong and playing and playing, playing some computer games. Six hours later. I have to study for a test. Mm -mm, no, no, no. And then you have to go take your test. So how much time do the students spend doing these different activities? Be sure to go back, look, read, and fill in the blanks. Now. We're going to talk about this part to class. We're going to talk about your typical day. So think about your typical day. What is it that you do day? This is your daily routine. What time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? What time do you brush your teeth, eat breakfast, do homework? Think about your typical day. My typical days can be very, very extreme. Like there are some days that I have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to teach a class. I teach for an hour, then I take an hour's nap, then I get ready, I go to class, teach for another three to four hours, then come back home, do work around my house, then spend time preparing lessons, cook dinner, and then do some more cleaning, more teaching, and then, yeah, your daily routine. Think about your daily routine and put it together because your routine, it doesn't have to be the exact thing that you do every day, but if you have a routine, put it back, put it together. Then we're gonna bring those exchange and bring those to class. We'll do this in the second class next week and we'll talk about your daily routine. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this lesson. We're gonna talk about more in the next one. Next lesson is a review, which will review units one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna go ahead and get that started in our next video. Thank you all very much. And I hope that you have a great and wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.